Tessa here, and for today's video, I'm going to be doing a little Q&A about my acting career. How I got on Disney Channel, how I got an agent, all that stuff. But first, I wanna tell you guys about Audible. A big shout out to Audible for sponsoring this video. It's the holiday season. Everyone is really, really busy right now, including me. I don't have time to sit down and read a book. And as a Ravenclaw, that makes me extremely sad. Thank goodness I have audiobooks. God bless Audible. I listen to Audible when I'm driving, traveling, cooking, cleaning, grocery shopping. The list is endless. Have you guys heard of Audible Originals? They are exclusive audio titles created by celebrated storytellers from worlds as diverse as theater, journalism, literature, and more. And speaking of Audible, I have a very special announcement to make. I actually voiced my first audiobook, and you can listen to it right now on Audible. It's called Redwood and Ponytail by K.A. Holt, and it's a story about two middle school girls who fall in love. I voiced one of those girls. Her name is Kate and she's a cheerleader type with a ponytail. The story is also told in verse and it is just so unique, so emotional, and such a beautiful story that I got to be a part of. Here is a little snippet of the audiobook. The poster burns. I hold up my phone. I hit record. Flames lick, devour, reach golden arms to the ceiling. And my eyes close. I feel the heat. I breathe the ash as a new chapter in the story of my future begins right now. Guys, how cool is that? Because I listen to Audible all the time, seeing narrated by Tessa Netting and hearing my voice on an audiobook is so crazy to me. I can't get over it. It's so cool. So if you haven't signed up for Audible, now is the time. Because right now for a limited time, you can get three months of Audible for only $6.95 a month. That's more than half off the regular price. And when you sign up, you can choose one audiobook and two Audible originals for free. So treat yourself and give yourself the gift of Audible membership with a special offer of 53% off your first three months. Go to audible.com slash Tessa Netting or text Tessa Netting to 500-500. That's audible.com slash Tessa Netting or text Tessa Netting to 500-500. Thanks again, Audible. I love you. Okay, let's get back to the video. So, <laughs> if you did not know, in addition to making videos on the internet, I am also an actress. <laughs> <laughs> Most people know me from Bunked, the Disney Channel TV show where I play Hazel, the mean girl with pigtails who's obsessed with Xander. Yeah, that's me. It's me! It's me. <laughs> but I've also acted in a bunch of other things too. To give you a brief summary, <laughs> I started out on Broadway in the original cast of Billy Elliot the Musical. I guest starred on TV shows on Hulu and Fox and Nickelodeon. I've been in a national TV commercial. I've done hosting and been on web series and musicals on the internet. And I've done voiceover in movies, TV shows, theme parks, podcasts. And I was the lead of a video game. And now an audiobook. I think that's everything. So for this video, I want to focus on general acting questions and the process of auditioning in Los Angeles, how I got on Disney Channel, how I got an agent, all that stuff. But I wanna make some other videos too. Like I really wanna make a video answering all of your bunked related questions because there were a lot of questions about bunked. Like why aren't I on bunked anymore? Am I still close with the cast? Are we friends? So many things. So if you guys want to see that video, give this video a thumbs up and comment below a bunked related question that you want me to answer. And then another video I wanna make because you guys asked a a lot of these questions is about my time on Broadway, about the audition process and what it was like doing eight shows a week and being in an original cast of a show. The reason I didn't put all of this stuff in this one video is because this video would be too long. So if you want that Broadway video, give this video a thumbs up and comment below a Broadway related question that you want me to answer. Again, I'm just asking because I don't know if you want these types of videos from me. All right, let's start this Q&A. So I took questions from my YouTube community tab, my Instagram stories, my Twitter, my Starfish Family Facebook group. I took it from everywhere. If you're not following me on all those things, make sure you are. Also, are you subscribed? If you're not subscribed at this point, like what are you doing? Subscribe. 
time. Okay, let's get to the questions. How old were you when you started to pursue acting? What kind of support did you and do you get from your family? I started professionally acting when I was in 10th grade. My first professional acting gig was a regional theater show at Bristol Riverside Theater in Pennsylvania. It was called Mrs. Bob Cratchit's Wild Christmas Binge. <laughs> And I played a Cratchit child. My parents were both so supportive of me. I can't thank them enough My mom drove me to New York for vocal lessons musical theater workshops and auditions and my dad when I got this regional theater job He drove me an hour to get there in an hour back and stayed with me during rehearsals So they helped me so much, but it was also one of those things where I was still thinking of going to college I like wanted to major in musical theater or acting or something like that. So that was kind of like okay with my parents. I, I like reasoned with them where it's like, yes, I want to do this, but I'm also like thinking of a backup plan. And I think that really convinced them and also it showed how serious I was about it. But they're such great parents. I feel like they would have supported me in whatever I wanted to do. Mom, dad, thank you for supporting me. I love you. Next question. How did you get into professional acting? Did you get an agent or did you find auditions yourself? I really love acting, but I'm not sure where to start. So how did you start? Out. So when I auditioned for Billy Elliot and when I auditioned for this regional theater show I didn't have an equity card or a union card. I didn't have an agent I used to get a backstage newspaper which listed all of the theater auditions like around the area now You can just go online to like backstage.com or playbill and they show all the theater auditions But that's how I used to get it. I used to get it in a newspaper and I used to like circle the auditions that I thought I'd be good for So that's how I found those auditions and because I was non-union I I had to like get there at five in the morning and be like first on the non-union list to audition. But this is where there is a difference between theater acting and on camera or acting in Hollywood, on TV, on movies. For theater acting, you can still audition without having an agent or without being in equity. You just might not be seen, but they still have open calls where they bring everybody in. There's not a guarantee that you'll be seen, but it still exists. In LA, you basically need to have an agent to get most auditions. You can still subscribe to websites like Actors Access, where you can submit yourself for smaller projects, but for the bigger auditions, most of the time those go directly through agents. An agent is more important for the Hollywood TV film on camera stuff. Okay, how did you get noticed and do you have any advice for aspiring actors like myself? So I did actually like get noticed online. So that's how my agency in Los Angeles found me. It was my Harry Potter Book of Mormon video. It went kind of viral at the time and was being shared around Twitter and Facebook. My agent, Pat Brady, who's a huge Harry Potter fan and also Star Kids manager, she found the video on Facebook and she contacted me and was like, this is incredible. I would love to meet with you. And because of that video, I was like, okay, I'm gonna go to LA and meet with this agent. <laughs> and then it happened again, like just last year when I was making videos on Facebook, my Moana Shrek mashup <laughs> that I made, a manager contacted me and was like, are you represented? This is amazing. Even though I already was represented and didn't need them, I was still getting contacted. So my best advice that I can give aspiring actors on how to get noticed is use the internet. It is here. It's a tool for you. Use it. And use Facebook. I've noticed that um, casting directors and those types of people, it's easier for them to find things on Facebook because it's being shared rather than YouTube because YouTube is more searchable rather than shareable. Or Twitter. Twitter's another place that is more like retweets and shares. So yeah, if you have something really creative or really musical or some way to show off your talent, then put it on Facebook or put it on Twitter. And if it kind of blows up, then you might get contacted by an agent or a manager. Also, I love you, Pat. <laughs> Thank you for finding me. She's a Hufflepuff. She's a good finder. Okay, how do you find a good agent? So this kind of goes along with the last question where I was lucky in that I got contacted uh, by an agent. But when I first came out to LA, not only did I meet with Pat and CESD, and they're the ones I ended up signing with, but I met with a couple other agencies too. And the best way to get to another agent is either through someone you know, they can make an intro for you, or like honestly, I did this and it worked for a couple agencies. I just looked up the address, I walked into the building to the front desk, and I handed them my headshot resume and cover letter. I was literally just like, hi, my name is Tessa. If you're looking for someone like me, here's my headshot and resume. I hope you consider me. If not, all good, bye. And it did work, I did get some calls. So 
that's not like unheard of you just can't like harass People. I found that going in person works better than just like email spam, but I do think the better option is to like either have a video online or have a showcase, like create a show or create something showcasing yourself, your talent. You always like when they come to you rather than you like begging for them, if that makes sense. Was it hard to move to LA? Yes. <laughs> it was so hard. You guys don't understand. When I moved to LA, I didn't know anybody. It was tough. It was probably one of the hardest times in my career. I was subletting, I didn't even have my own apartment. I was like staying in people's pool houses or spare rooms. I felt lonely and I didn't have a lot of money at all, at all. The longer that I stayed, the easier it became. First year is always the hardest. Okay, my first Hollywood gig. My first Hollywood gig was on Fred the Show on Nickelodeon. Do you guys remember that? Like the Fred character on YouTube had a Nickelodeon show and I was on two episodes of that show. Lucas, you're not watching this, but I freaking love you wherever you are. Yeah, I was on that show. It was so fun. I had like this weird Southern accent. <laughs> That was my first job in LA. And that was the first time being on an episode of a TV show. It was just a wacky, fun show. I loved it. How did you get on Bunked? Okay, how did I get on Disney Channel? So I got the Bunked audition through my agents at CESD. They submitted me for it. So when I read these sides, I was like, my favorite villain is Harley Quinn. What if I can make Hazel like Harley Quinn? And for Hazel, I did this like voice. Emma. It's me, Hazel. Because Harley Quinn has a really specific voice. So to the audition, I wore pigtails, a Camp Half-Blood t-shirt, Versa Jackson represent, shorts, and high socks. This is my version of Hazel. When I showed up to the audition, I was so different than everyone else there. It was absurd. Everyone else played more of like the nerdy route of Hazel. They were wearing like bucket hats and like nerd glasses, where I was more like Harley, mean girl, and they were more like nerd girl, but she still mean so I like stuck out and that's one thing that I like to do when I'm auditioning I like when I am different from everyone else there I also made Hazel's character very physical and that's something that I like to do with my comedy where I just kind of like threw myself <laughs> to the ground. And each callback, I still like stayed true to that character that I had made in my head. But those final callbacks, man, is is tough cuz you're like so close and you're like looking at the other people like one of us is going to get this. <laughs> it's always so awkward. I hate it. Had dyeing your hair have any influence on getting some roles? Hazel, for example. When you're auditioning, you should know your type that fits kind of like how you look. My type is the funny neighbor or mean girl. I'm a character actor. And because of that, I found that having not normal hairstyles has helped me with that. So having like platinum blonde hair, having a pixie cut, unnatural hair has helped me. So go with a hairstyle that reflects your type. Tips for auditions. My biggest tip that I can give you is don't Play it safe. Most people will choose the obvious choice. Be embarrassing, be out there. Think of something different that you can do with the character. That's always worked for me. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, that's totally fine. I'm not like telling you to do something and you don't wanna do it. I guess then like make a choice that's not so obvious. Even if it's not embarrassing or out there, it can still be different. Don't be afraid to make a weird choice. Go with that choice and be like completely committed to it. What's the weirdest audition process you've been through? Probably like any commercial audition. <laughs> commercial auditions are so weird. Every single commercial audition I've been to is weird because literally you're like you're in a waiting room and it's filled with people that look like you because usually they're looking for someone that looks a certain way. So it's like, okay, we want like short blonde. So then I'll, there'll be like a room full of short blonde people that kind of look like me. So it's like I'm in like a Black Mirror episode and there's like clones of me everywhere. Then you have to like walk in, stand in a line and they'll like call you forward and they'll like ask you some weird question about yourself like, What's your favorite color and why? Or they'll be like, okay, pretend to bite this burger and say, ooh, yummy to the camera. <laughs> That's what I mean. It's like so funny and weird. So yeah, commercial auditioning is weird, but I mean, it's fun. Were there any roles you tried out for and were really bummed when you didn't get them? I auditioned for, oh, I auditioned for Hazel in not, <laughs> not on Bunked. Hazel in uh, Fault in Our Stars. I got to audition for that. 
and that was crazy. You know, Shailene Woodley is amazing, so she was probably a lot better than me. Another audition that I did, oh, you know what, like, I'm kind of bummed that I didn't get? I was in, like, final callbacks for Katra on She-Ra. If you guys watch that animated show, I was so close and I didn't get it. That would have been cool. How many times have you been rejected from a character you want to be? Uh, perfect transition. <laughs> you get rejected all the time. You can't be an actor if you're not okay with rejection. This business is tough. It is so tough. It's not only judging you by your appearance, like so much, but you're also constantly being rejected. And also you're getting like so close and then they're like slapping it away. So it can be really emotionally difficult and you have to be ready to handle that. What was your Glee experience like? Yes, I was on Glee. I was on the Baby Got Back episode, <laughs> which apparently is like the worst episode of Glee of all time or something. I am honored. I actually made a video about like my whole Glee like audition process. So I'm gonna link that video in the description. Check that out. It will tell you about my crazy audition and how I sang Gangnam Style. Why am I so embarrassing all the time? My Glee experience was crazy. It was a lot of dancing in like nine inch heels. I just met Chris Colfer. He was the only one that was there from like the main cast. And we talked about Harry Potter. He was really, really nice. It was cool having Joey there. Joey and I both auditioned for that role. Like people think that I got that because of Darren because I'm friends with Darren and Joey because he's friends with Darren but no we literally just auditioned for that role like everyone else. I actually auditioned right after Joey. We just auditioned and both got the part. That's happened to me and Joey like a couple of times now where we have been cast together in things. Like we were in this one pilot, we were cast together. It didn't end up going anywhere, but we were both the leads. And they're like, do you guys know each other? And we're like, yes. So Joey, I can't wait to be cast in something else with you in the future. We're just meant to be together. But yeah, Glee was so freaking fun. I had a blast. Also, um, this is crazy. For that Glee shoot, to style my hair, I had like a pixie cut at that time. The hairstylist that was on set. So apparently she was like working on SNL or something before this and she had some hair gel left over from One Direction. So One Direction like had their own hair gel. And she's like, I have some left over, you wanna use it? And I said, uh, yes. And let me tell you, it's magic. It was like perfect hold, but looked perfectly swoopy. Oh my gosh, it was incredible. Like no wonder One Direction's hair looked so good all the time. It's because of that magic hair gel. It was on my head. I was blessed. Any other TV appearances besides Glee and Bunked? Well, I was on Fred, which I told you about. Oh, I was also on Watch What Happens Live. If any of you know like Bravo TV, Andy Cohen, he has this like after show called Watch What Happens Live. And I was invited on as a Teresa Judice impersonator for like a Halloween episode. I was dressed up as Teresa. And she's like one of the real housewives of New Jersey. I was dressed up as her and I went on the show and I bobbed for breast implants plants on national television. Living my best life. <laughs> what is my life? I don't know. So yeah, that was another time I was on TV. What was your favorite role you ever played? Hazel. I love playing those types of characters. I love being like obsessively in love, like a fangirl character. I love being like this over the top mean girl. Like every one of my favorite things to do like put together. It was physical, it was perfect. Like Hazel was the perfect role for me. Ah, it's the best. <laughs> best memory from your acting career. I gotta say, I think that my best memory was opening night of Billy Elliot. Oh my gosh, it was, uh, I can't even explain it. The standing ovation, the energy from the audience, from everyone in the cast, it was just like pure bliss and pure adrenaline, pure happiness, pure joy. It was unlike anything I've ever experienced and ever will experience again. I loved every second of being on Broadway. Billy Elliot. I love you forever. I have so many Elton John stories. The truth about getting into the business. Okay, I'm gonna spill some tea. Here's the deal. Your talent, I don't wanna say it doesn't matter, <laughs> but everyone here is talented. You have to realize that. If you're in New York, 
auditioning for Broadway or if you're in LA auditioning for TV, movies, all that. You have to realize that everyone from around the country or even like around the world, all of the best people are there auditioning. You are going up against the best people. Everyone's talented. Everybody is like at the top of their game. And also everyone is beautiful. Like everyone is good looking. It's like intimidating. And again, you're going to like walk into auditions, seeing people that look like you, like because they're looking for a certain type of person. So then you're like comparing yourself to these other people. It's an industry full of comparison. It's an industry full of rejection. It's an industry full of like worrying about your appearance and worrying about getting older and worrying about just how you come across and what people think of you. So it's like a lot. It's a lot. Just because you're talented doesn't mean that you're gonna get roles. And that has nothing to do with your talent sometimes. And also you can be a working actor and not be famous. Most people that live in Los Angeles and work as an actor will never be famous, but they're, they will still be working. You can't do this for fame or you're gonna be unhappy. Like there's other ways to be famous. Be on the internet. <laughs> To have a goal for your acting career, are you just living one role at a time? Okay. So when I first moved to Los Angeles, the agency that I'm with right now, CESD, when I first moved here, they asked me, they said, what is your goal with acting? And I had a goal. I was like, okay, I want to be on three things. I want to be on Glee, I want to be on Nickelodeon, and I want to be on Disney Channel. That's it. And I did it. Heck yeah! I did it! So now, I don't know what to do. <laughs> What do you want to do next acting wise? It's voiceover. That's my plan. That's my goal. Every voiceover job that I have done has been so fun. For me, voiceover is focused on what I love about acting, which is the acting itself. It takes away like the fame aspect. It takes away like the appearance or worrying about what I look like. It just focuses on diving into a character and really bringing that to life. And that is the best. So that is what I want to do next. And I love my voiceover agents at CESD. You guys are the best. I love you. Seriously, they're the best. Brizzy is also with them. I'm so happy that they signed her and we're doing it together. It's the best ever. What is your dream acting gig? I'm gonna put it into the universe. This is my dream acting gig. I want to be a cartoon. <laughs> I want to be on an animated show. I've been so close. You guys don't even know. I want to voice a cartoon character. I want to be in an animated show. That's my next goal. I did the Broadway. I did the on camera. This is next for me. We'll just have to see. We'll have to see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. Wow. That was a lot guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Give this video a thumbs up if you want me to make more of these acting videos, especially if you want me to make one about Bunked and one about Broadway. Comment below, let me know. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can geek with me every week. Follow me on Instagram, listen to my podcast, check out my description box, and don't let the muggles get you down. Stay gold starfish. Bye! Good luck, jeez. But you know, happiness can be found even in the darkest of times. One only remembers to turn on the light. Expecto Patronum!